All right. Hey, guys. It's so good to see you. I am happy to be a part of this. I'd like to say hi to life groups, especially my life group. I hope you chose to watch mine. So uh, I know that you could be watching Craig or Paul and that you are picking some time with me. My heart just is t truly warmed. So today we're going to be talking about shape. And the idea is there are certain shapes that we have. It's an acronym, five things that make up who we are and where we fit best when it comes to serving. And I'm going to walk through those five topics with you and hopefully help you think through help you evaluate where is it that I'm the best fit in serving. So we're going to start off with uh, shape here. We're going to look at the first one, which is the letter S, which is your spiritual gifts. Now your spiritual gifts are things that when you become a follower of Jesus, God begins to work in your heart. And I'm actually going to go to a scripture here today that will help you follow along with this. This is from Romans chapter 12, and he describes a few of the spiritual gifts. These aren't all of them, but the way he describes them I think is so important, and I want you to be aware of this too. So this is Romans chapter 12, and this is about three verses, verses 6 through 8. Now we all have different gifts. Now stop for a second and look around your room with your little life group. You already realize this to be true. When you look around the room, you guys are all, and guys and girls, are all different people. So this one it says, we have different gifts according to the grace given each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is encouraging, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. One of the things I love about this, it gives, this is, remember, again, this is not a comprehensive list. This is a small list, but it always gives this little extra part at the end. I would call this an amplifier. How do you show mercy? Sometimes showing mercy is hard. It says, do it cheerfully. And how do you lead? Sometimes, you talk about leading, sometimes leadership is exhausting. And he, but he says, do it diligently. So whenever you, whenever you find out what your spiritual gift is, I want you to realize that there's something that will amplify it. Now each of you are going to get a spiritual assessment that will help you find out what your gift is. And then I want you to think about how is this most effective. I'd like to share with you one of mine. One of mine is a word that's called exhortation, which is a word you never hear outside of a church. And I'll give you a little background on what it really means. It means coaching. It means you see a problem in someone and you have the willingness to say, hey, you're doing that wrong. The problem with me is the way that I do it. I need one of these qualifiers, these amplifiers that really help me do it better. Because when I go to coach someone, here's what I do. I furrow my brow, my voice goes up two notches, and I say, knock it off. I find that's not the most effective way to do that. So when I look at the idea of coaching or exhorting someone, my, my word is I need to do it delicately. So as you are evaluating where in my framework, where I find out what is my spiritual gift, as you find that, I want you to also do this. You need to find the amplifier. What's the component that will help you do this best? Just doing it sometimes isn't enough. You'll need to be more effective in it. I notice this it also will be about the pe with the people that you're around. Um, one of my gifts is uh, teaching, just the nature of partly um, how God has gifted me and, and put me in, in, in certain places that allows me to use that gifting. One of the things that I've noticed, though, is he partnered me with a wife who has the gift of hospitality, which means my gifting is taking a truth and making it into a portable, handleable um, concept that people can take with them. But you know what's interesting is when you are married to someone who has the gift of hospitality, she then has the ability to help people feel at home, which means they're far more receptive to what I have to say. And the combo of people working together where you have two separate giftings working in tandem is so important. Your, sh your shape begins with the idea of your spiritual gifts. Okay, you're going to have some questions at the end. I want you to begin thinking about what you think your spiritual gift may be. Now, moving on from spiritual gift, the H stands for heart. When we say heart, this is where your emotions are moved. I recently was in a conversation where people were talking about what really moves them. For some, it was that there was a movement. When they hear about a problem with AIDS in Africa, they are moved. For other people, it was uh, the way kids relate to their parents. There was someone else that was like, why are grandparents having to raise their kids? And every time they hear these stories, there's something in their heart that breaks. That's an indication that this is a place where God is calling you to probably lean in. One of the things that you need to know about this, though, is that when you discover where your heart breaks, it does not mean that you are fully prepped to serve there. It just is an indicator that's a place you want to direct your attention. So listen carefully. 
if you have a mindset that says I, or not a mindset, if you have a heartbeat that says I love to see kids fall in love with Jesus, but you scare them to death, you're not quite there. And this is where you really, I want you to hear this. Sometimes this Actually, if you just move in these two and you don't move on to the next three, you actually may do damage. Because your heartbeat is, I want to help kids. And you have some spiritual gifting and you go in there and you haven't mixed the other three, the P and the, or the A, the P and E. I had to figure out what the letters were, okay? If spelling is not your thing, it's okay. So if you have a heartbeat for kids but you haven't yet worked out the framework that you need to function with the other p- components, you're actually in trouble, But you have to know what this is because if you're going and serving and you can't stand this and you don't really care, you know what's going to show up? That you don't really care. Hear this part. When it comes to your heart, you have to care. The next thing that you're going to need to see, and this really is where you will practice in a way to make your heartbeat more effective, it has to do with your abilities. And if you're writing this down, I want you to write the word skills next to this because your abilities really are a skill set. Here's a great one. You may have a heart to worship God through music, and you got no rhythm, and you got no voice. You know what I would suggest? Pandora and Spotify. That's what I would suggest for you. But as far as maybe being on a worship team, you may not be there. Except that here's another component that's really fascinating. Your heartbeat, if you have the skill set and the abilities to go with it, you may actually be trained to where you can be effective in both. So I, I was thinking about this in, in terms of, of skill set with if I had a heartbeat for kids, and this is where my, my heart still just beats here. I used to be a kid's pastor. Um, it, is I love seeing kids engaged with the Bible, engaged um, with Jesus. That is just still, it just gets me. But if I have no ability to teach, no ability to connect with them, if I don't realize that if I get down on their level, how much more effective that, all of those things are skill sets. And if you are, are willing to be humble enough to grow in this area, your shape will change over time. This is so critical. So I ask this question, and I'm going to ask it now. I want you to begin evaluating it. You're going to talk about it at the end. Are you teachable? If you think you've arrived, you don't have all the information. There's more that you need to know. Uh, And the other thing I'd say is you may think you have all the skills in place. Don't be done growing. Ability and skill sets are never complete. Practice a a mindset that says you are um, someone who is growing. The next one has to do with your personality. Boy, I'll tell you, if you don't understand who you are and the way that your personality functions, two things may happen. You may damage other people and you may damage yourself because you don't know how to care for yourself. This is where we come in with emotional intelligence or EQ. You have to know yourself. And if you're someone who gets drained by people and you spend all your time with people, you're going to burn out. You got to know how you fit best. So a couple quick questions. Are you someone who likes to be up front or you like to be behind the scenes? Another one, are you an extrovert or an introvert? That just simply means extroverts are energized by being around people. And introverts are people who just need a little bit more space where they need some alone time. Now, this doesn't mean they're not good with people, but they just have to realize when I'm with people, people drain me. And if that's the case, then you need to realize you have to schedule your day differently. All of these components will come into play when it comes to how effective you will be in making an impact uh, for Christ. The final thing that I want to put on this has to do with that E, and it comes with your experience. One of the things that that I would begin with, I think of really two things I want to challenge you on with your experience. Are your experiences growing, or are you pretty stagnant with what you do? You do what you've always done. I heard a great quote once. If you do what you've always done, you'll be where you've always been. And there's some real truth to that. And if you look at your life, there's nothing new that you've tried in the last year. In fact, I just, I'm going to go ahead and put a plug for something here. You know, some of you, what you need to do is you need to take a trip to Mexico. You need to broaden those experiences. The other thing that I want you to know is that sometimes the experiences that we have are actually heartbreaking experiences. And they seem so shattering to our life at the time when they happen. But I want you to know something. That God can redeem the broken experiences that you have. We have a a dear friend who uh, four years ago, one summer day, she had a phone call finding out that her sister had been killed in a car accident. 
This shattered her heart. This shattered the world that she had known. Interestingly enough, as time has gone by and as she has walked through the process of grief, as she has felt the ache that came from that, she's stepped out and begun processing that with other people. And in fact, at our, our campus, at the Green Campus, Amy leads our grief care ministry, taking what was something that was the, maybe the most bitter thing that she had gone through in her life, and now she's helping other people walk through with them whenever they are feeling something similar to that. So quick review here. If you're looking at your spiritual gifting, your heart, your ability, your personality, and your experience, understand this. All of them are not stagnant. They're all apt for growth. And I said it, I was thinking about this, and this, I'm just verbally processing with you right here, but I said it under abilities about being teachable. My realization is if, if you're willing to expand your experiences, you know what that says? It says that you're teachable. And if you're willing to be aware of yourself, it means that you're willing to say, hey, what's really true about me? And of course, your abilities and your skill sets there. This is critical. And I would say the growth of the church and the growth of your heart and the growth of your ability to impact the world and not just sit where you've always been, so much of it comes around with this heartbeat. Am I moldable and am I teachable? I love you guys, and I can't wait to see what impact shape can make on your life.